community? I don't, no, no. So like heights and stuff like that, we're both not afraid. So she like her before coming into uh, the SSC world and stuff like that, she was in oil and gas. So she had to climb like these big ass refineries that are just like, uh, you know, single step ladder just welded onto a side of this fucking burning tower. That's and way more interesting. There. Yeah. And she's just like, yeah, I mean, we really didn't have like supportive gear. You don't really have like a cage wrapped around the the ladder that you know you kind of see in sometimes right. high, yeah, I've li- seen high it on the side structures. of the building. Yeah. Yeah, it's just no, it's just a ladder. She just just bareback the ladder yeah. on the side of a and she's wearing a bunch of gear. Bike. So she was she was part of like the radioactive team too. So um shit that's kind of like spewing out of the um I guess the opening of like a um, the shit that's on fire and you know, like kind of like the natural gas reservoir and bleed off thing. Uh, she's mm-hmm. making sure like everything's secure there. Um, she would go what into like the these weird ass pipes areas and, and take pictures for uh, radiographs and stuff like that. She did, she did some cool stuff. Oh, we have JD08 here. Well, JD, you're going to have to wait because we got a lot of bullshit to talk about first. <laughs> Apparently uh, Phoebe was a heroic ladder climber in the Navy SEALs in the natural gas industry. Mm-hmm. Um, which was a big surprise. I had no idea about this. Um, we have, I think, seven or eight user form checks to get through. We got a bunch of videos that came in last time. Um, and then general shit talking about the starting strength franchises. I, I, told, I told you I went down to Orlando, right? For to go to see Pete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, curious Pete, to see like, what you thought of it. Pete's a fun guy. Yeah, Pete's great. That was that was an interesting experience to see that. Um, JD, is your back currently terribly tweaked? Is that what's going on? <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah. Um, man, I have, wow, we got to interview Phoebe about, I just need to talk to Phoebe about her old life pre starting yeah. strength. Life. God, I feel like that's just a traumatic, traumatic life experience. Just being constantly at debt. It's like the guys, you just see the guys who do cell phone repair, cell phone tower repair. Oh, have you ever seen like, those uh, videos? I've seen like multiple ones where like they're, they just climb like a ladder just to screw in like a light bulb and they get like $200,000 a year. <laughs> Yeah, just be ready. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a few of them where it's like they'll put like a GoPro on their head, and then you know they'll they'll go up. Literally one ladder rung, carabiner Mm -hmm. in. One ladder rung, carabiner in. And those guys just Mm -hmm. have the nastiest forearms in the whole world. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Death grip and everything. Just (laughs) constantly pissing themselves. (laughs) Yeah. Um, that seems terrifying. Uh, but yeah, everybody. So last last week was a hiatus. I went on vacation to Orlando. I went to Disney. I saw Starting Strength Orlando. I saw a tremendous amount of obese people. Um, possibly the largest obese woman I've ever seen in my life. I was talking to Chase about that before the show. Um, I think I kind of worried Mick a little bit. I put my phone in the hotel closet for the first like three or four days. I was like, I'm just not, I'm not going to look at anything. Um, he was like, what happened? <laughs> we missed a stream. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you been up to anything, Chase? Have you hit any recent PRs, any cool lifts going on? I saw no, one clip um, of you on the starting strength media with a dog laying on your chest. That was very cute. Yeah. So that was my um, great Dane, mm-hmm. but no. Um, so I'm, I'm geared up for a competition, uh, October 22nd. It's going to be an, an Olympic meet. So I've kind of changed programs a little bit, some more emphasis on getting practice with the heavier uh, snatches and cleaning mm-hmm. jerks. So at least twice a week on both lifts, I'm, working up to a max and then hopefully trying to beat the max the second go around or the next week. How true so is that get, max? Um, it's pretty true. So well for the, the clean and jerk the snatch, not so much. So I, I snatched one twenty three, mm-hmm. um, and it, it was really easy. Like I could have gone on heavier, but, um, just wanted to kind of stay there. Um, for the clean and jerk, I got one seventy, and my best is one seventy five. I attempted mm-hmm. one seventy five. Friday, like three times, so damn close. I think my biggest problem is like I either jump too early, um, and then I'm kind of leaving my arms too straight as I jump. So like my arms kind of just like canter off mm-hmm. forward because I'm I'm terrible at shrugging. So <laughs> kind of just I'm just trying to figure that shit out. Oh man. Um, oh, how do you pronounce this first name? We talked about this before. Is Yoka this Joka? Is it Yoka? I feel I feel like I'm culturally appropriating by saying the why. I feel like I have to say Joker, Joker English. Why? So like if he's Spanish, the the J turns into an H. Yeah, I just I is oh it's an H not a Y. Hoka. It maybe so, maybe. but like it I think in like uh, Scandinavian though the the J is a Y. 
Okay. All right. Like a fjord. Please anglicize your name for us, please. Yeah. Joker. Heath Ledger. Um, no Mick today. John Carr. Yeah, John Carr. That's a really good name. That's an excellent name. John Carr. Um, yeah, no Mick today. He's doing music school stuff. So we're just going to be we're going to be doing normal shooting the shit stuff. Um, so what's your plan for kind of your tapery for your peak going to this meet? Um, probably stop actually lifting with like the, the squat and the press and the deadlift about a week or maybe two before mm-hmm. the competition week. And, and so I can give myself some time to recover and then just kind of so solely focus on um, keeping that, that practice and that intensity up with the, uh, the heavier Olympic stuff. And I'll, I'll just work up to like a, maybe a, a manageable you know, one RM for hopefully the squat um, or get pretty cl- close to it. Same thing with the press and the deadlift. Okay, so hit those relative ones a few weeks mm-hmm. out, and then mm-hmm. pull that volume out. Okay, have you kind of noticed that there's a if the, if there if you have one as a, as an athlete, kind of like an upper ceiling on tolerable mental volume for squat or to me for the clean or the snatch? Like afterwards, you just kind of get in your head, and the technique starts falling and shit. Yeah, I would say um, if I if I miss, and this is kind of like around like one twenty, like. I, 120 is weird in my head. Like I, I know I'm way strong enough to do this, but mm-hmm. I always end up fucking missing the first attempt, and then I go back and do it again, smoke it, or I just go, yeah. you know, fuck 120, and then I load up like 125 or 123, and then I smoke that. So it's like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And then my last warm up before 120 is like 110, so it's it's not bad. It's just like yeah. a 22 pound jump. So I don't know. It's I, I can smoke all those all day, but. And 120 is just like, nope, not today. It's just kind of a little mental mind fuck for me. That is an interesting one. I've noticed that with like a lot of guys who are just kind of high performers in general. It doesn't necessarily be the Olympic lifts, but it'll be like, yeah, you know, 315 bench, always weird. If they go like 320, 322, they'll be like, mm-hmm. okay, it's not 315. It's not the sad, it's not the important mm-hmm. one, you know. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm curious about uh so have you done any sort of mock meets for uh the Olympic lifts yet so far? I guess you could say that one that we did in Wichita Falls uh, with the clean and press, the snatch, and the clean and jerk. I guess okay. that was kind of a, a mock meet in the sense. Well, I mean, it actually was a meet, but. Um, did it's you not do a, a full true... taper for that, or did you go in pretty fatigued? No, I went in pretty fatigued. That's what I was figuring for that one. Yeah, yeah it was just kind of like a next show. It was basically just kind of a hard day of training, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay, that'll be really interesting, man. Um, yeah, I got to sex Phoebe to be like, document his prep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah um but okay uh so we're talking back tweak stuff we're gonna do these user form checks while we are also talking about uh the starting strength stuff in orlando um the reason i wanted to do back tweak stuff is because uh when i saw pete he was coaching th- i believe three well it was he was coaching three women simultaneously all of whom had back tweaks and they were all very you could tell just kind of personality wise, they were all relatively Mm -hmm. like conscientious, very, you know, um, very caring, very type A people. And he managed that really well. He managed it really well. That's hard to manage with just one person. So having three of them at the same time, that was really rough. Um, So I wanted to hear a lot of your opinions, Chase, on what you do. Like if someone literally in the gym is like, this is not working today. My knee's not working today. My back's not working today. What do you do literally within that first kind of 10, 15 minutes? I mean, this person's borderline, I mean, I'm sorry, baseline is they're, they're coming in here and they're, they're paying for your, your ability to coach them. Mm-hmm. So if I just am a dickhead, I'm like, no, I'll just push through it and give them the old like high school uh, coach. <laughs> Walk it on. Ring about. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. you'll be fine type thing. That person's never going to come into my doors again. So mm-hmm. you, you kind of have to put on your thinking cap here and come up with different ways to where they're still using it and they're still re- rehabbing it as best as we can, but they're not, let's say if they injured on a squat, they're not squatting again because now they have this terrified mm-hmm. uh, imagination of the squat will kill me. So yeah, now we do something that's, yeah, that's completely different to where maybe, okay, hey, let's warm up on the prowler. Um, does your back feel fine on the prowler? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Let's try this. Um, let's do like an RDL. Just lean over and try to touch your toes. How does that feel? And again, you're just kind of going about with different range of motions. You're testing the back and, you know, compression, a little bit of moment, um, maybe even some tension too with like a lap pull. But you're figuring out different ways to where you're working around the back tweak and then really emphasizing that, hey, 
you need to move and that if you just let this thing heal, it's never going to be the same and you're not as fucked up as you think. Yeah. Like the, the last, the, if those are bullet points, very solid bullet points, you know, like keep moving. It's not necessarily letting it heal. You need, you need to like make it heal, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then the third one just completely slipped out of my mind. I think it was just figure out a way to really be productive, you know, like within that yep. session, you need to do other stuff. You're already there in the gym. You know what I mean? If it ends up being some chin ups and some prowler work, that's still a really productive day. Even if whenever you're squatting, you feel like your back hurts, you know? Um, sometimes the back to week, like anomalously, it's like so bad on the day that you can't do anything else. Like in most, you could do yeah. like some calf raises. In those situations, you kind of have to focus the rest of the session on limbering up, finding a way to do a box squat, do an air squat, maybe do the empty bar by the end of the session. But in most situations, um, generally, let's say like we're squatting first, person has a back tweak on the squat. Um, it's going to be, we're immediately going to transition to the upper body movement is the main lift. And you're going to be doing squat warm up like activities or deadlift warm up like activities during that upper body movement slot. Um, so like priority number one, from a coaching perspective, it seems like Chase and I agree on this is find a way to still make that productive. Otherwise your boy's just going to leave, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, go, go Conrad here, by the way, have you been watching this chase? Yeah, a little bit. Um, like he, he's not bad. He's just kind of not really setting his knees quick enough and he's bouncing into him and that's mm -hmm. kind of causing him to raise his chest so if he yeah, could just you know make his shoulders and his knees touch on the way down and hold him touching on the way back up i think this will solve a lot of stuff yeah the pacing is is really the issue here um it's not an identical pacing every rep it's a different pacing you know for all five of them um so try to make it very identical focus on one master task which in chase's mm -hmm. uh situation here said just get your pecs down to your knees chest down to your knees keep everything in line i think that'll go really well um the bar could stand to be lower i would compromise on the straight wrists and you know let them bend a little bit or get them out so that you can get the bar in the correct spot um and then this guy's going hard. Did you see the bench in the back, Chase? Yeah, I just saw that. And yeah. he has the uh, the bar jack. And this looks like our uh, our rack from Texas Strength yep. Systems. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah, it, I think it's I think it's, it's probably if I had to bet, it's probably also an SS bar as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think so. Yeah, this man, so, look, yeah. Right. That's he knows what's going plus on. Plus five, man. Plus five on the <laughs> the swag there. Yeah. Um, I also think I really enjoy it when people wear, uh, like a shirt and pants that are like the same exact material to the gym, same material and color. Cause it just looks like they're wearing like just one bodysuit the whole time. I really mm -hmm. like that. I like that as a move. Oh, here we go. Pete haven't seen Pete in a minute. How you doing Pete? Um, he said he had a standard protocol for back tweaks. Don't miss your next workout. Modify. Don't miss. Yeah. Yeah. Like cardinal sin, missing a workout, haven't done it in like 85 years. I don't know who on God's green earth would miss a workout. <laughs> yeah, I think we asked, we talked to Chase about that. When's the last time you missed a workout? He's, he's like, never. Yeah, I'm not programmed to. <laughs> yeah, my program never says don't show up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so that was Gogo Conrad. This is uh, Denny Vathar or Denivathar. I don't know where the first name is and where the last name is. Not entirely I like sure. his last name, Vathar. Vathar would be a pretty sick last name if that was his whole last name. For, confirmed. Okay. I'm going to need some work on the descent for sure. Mm -hmm. Are the plates touching the floor or are they off? No, he's on the, he's on the floor. Yeah, so he's in the rack, but the the, mm -hmm. the lower uh, supports for the rack are below the barbell height, so he's fine. Gotcha. Seems like he switched to mixed grip on that one. Okay. Yeah, he needs to kind of learn, I think, first how to better film this shit because you can't really see <laughs> too much. But, I mean, from, like, its start position, um, I don't like his hips where they are. Yeah, well, I'm um, going to freeze I the think... start. There we go. Yeah, so like right there, his shoulders, they just now got over the bar, but um, mm -hmm. I need him just to be a little bit more forward, and that's going to help by just raising up his hips and then setting his back, making sure that he can get his back completely into extension, especially in his lumbar back. Yeah. So generally, whenever people sit behind the bar, you'll notice it if their arms are completely vertical, like <clears> you <throat> kind of picture where like the head of his humerus is, and then... Um, 
and then his hand. If that's kind of a straight line. He either is like 75% of the way done with the rep or he's way too far behind the bar. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when people get really far behind the bar, they kind of want to shorten their back segment. So then they end up punching a little bit. Um, so we want you to have like a nice long back. And then like Chase said, spot on, um, get the shoulders a little bit in front of the bar. Um, to Which to a lot of people seems counterintuitive. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. But I mean, look, this the way that we're going to help train this guy's back is not by dropping our hips like this and then basically trying to get it as vertical as, as possible. We need to keep it as horizontal as possible at the start, and then mm-hmm. it'll gradually change back to vertical. But th- this rigid segment that we're calling it a contraction is now going to go through this long range of motion, and we move that through that range of motion with all this muscle mass. Yeah, but we want you to use your back, dog. Yeah, confirmed. Mm-hmm. Um, that was Denny Vathar or Denivathar. I'm not sure. Um, this guy is a much more normal name. His name is Austin95. Uh, I don't like his name. Uh, yeah, it's awesome not cool enough for the show. <laughs> no. Yeah, Go Go Conrad was a, was a pretty good name for number. That's kind of good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So cool dude sixty nine. He said uh, upper back in my experience is much worse than lower back. At least this was the case when I herniated a disc in my neck. There was no training for a little while after that. Yeah. Have you had any uh, bad upper back injuries, Chase? I remember one time. Um, I think I. I may have like. Sp- either tweak like an intercostal or like a very high, like upper rib. Um, it kind of just hurt to breathe, you know, type thing. Um, Mm -hmm. when I put my shoulders into scapular retraction, it hurt. I think I did it on a squat where I either, um, got loose underneath the bar or the bar kind of just smushed me at the bottom and I, and I relaxed. That was kind of hard, but I think low backs in my, my experiences, those tweaks are way worse. Yeah, I, you know, I'd i have to bet if you lined up 100 people in the room, they would all say they fear a lower back tweak more, for sure. Yeah. Um, upper back is pretty rare, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, all of the all of the neck and upper back stuff I've had has been grappling related. The worst one, um, it, it seemed as if, if I had to bet, like one of the transverse processes on kind of like C3 or C4 just mashed uh, the nerve going into my right arm. So I just had a crazy amount of cervical hyperextension, and then this arm just went numb, just totally yeah. floppy. And it was like that for a few hours. Um, basically, like my head got pinned on the ground, and the rest of my body rolled over my neck, but this way. Jesus. Um, that was real rough. Training through that, that was hard. That was like, all right, dude, we're strapping up for that deadlift. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you been watching uh, Austin, 95 pounds? The squat? Uh, yeah, a little bit. He's just kind of swaying a lot and kind of finding a hard balance point here. Um, so what I mean by that is Austin needs to think about midfoot. Um, so from here, his stance, I like his heels out a little bit wider. His toes are fine, just kind of kick out the heels. And then, again, you can kind of see how his heels raise up. He's on his toes constantly throughout the whole entire set. And a lot of this is kind of due to where the heels are. And then, two his shoes. I think if he gets better shoes, oh, this thing will, will iron itself out. Mm-hmm. He's kind of looking like a Sim City character here a little bit. I never played Sims. Oh, I never played Sims? Okay. I, I understand think, what it is, but... You think just like the... If you just kind of had to dress someone just kind of as... I don't want to say generically as possible, but just kind of like... Like if I close my eyes and, I, and I've never seen anything before and then you describe, hey, this guy is wearing gym clothes and I look, yeah, this will be it's like exactly. Clothes. It's exactly yeah. the guy. Yep. Converse. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. This the, is a gentleman. The American who needs flag to gain. colors. Exactly. This is a gentleman who needs to gain a solid 40 pounds. Yeah. I'm normally not even in the camp of please, you know, gain a shit ton <laughs> of weight. But this guy, I think he needs to do exactly that. <clears throat> um, anything else here for Austin 95? I don't really think so. Also, I don't even know where to buy these socks anymore. The socks that aren't really like long socks, but they're not ankle socks either. I haven't seen yeah. these since I've been a child. What, what I've those, had like, those. Crew length? <laughs> I think they're called like crew length or some I shit. Don't I don't know, but I feel like for the first 12 years of my life, I wore exclusively those socks. That was it. That was all elementary school was the Dude, zip off kinda, pant. Yeah, this was, I was having a shower thought and because like, I have a tan line where my, my low riding uh, socks are now. I'm like, for the longest time, <laughs> I had long socks, and then one day I literally just woke up and was like, "You know what? These long socks 
we're going to switch back to short socks. Okay. And it's just like this weird evolution that just happened. I'm like, why did this happen? And it was back just a, game, a sudden change. I know. It was mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, I've met some kind of like a more middle-aged guys in my life who just kind of still wear like the halfway up the shin white socks. Yeah. And they're like the same socks I've been wearing for 40 years, dude. Never going to change. That's a, that's a good yep. look. Um, back to serious things. Um, Pete said, um, for back tweaks, uh, we try to work up to rack pulls at the lowest possible setting without discomfort and ascend to the highest possible weight without discomfort. And with low volume dubs, then we try to progress the rack pull lower and lower. Interesting. How do you feel about doubles? Do you think lower reps are a little bit higher? What do you normally do for rep ranges in these situations, Chase? It depends. I have had more success just kind of doing more reps. Um, mm-hmm. And again, like that that's kind of like how I originally – um, was taught and then how I, I approached volume and then this new idea of like look if we just kind of modify the reps and sets we can also affect the intensity so let's say pete and his guys are using like 10 doubles at a higher intensity so that way this person um, whenever they tweak their back at like a 365 deadlift and they're still moving like 315 in the rack they don't have this huge gap disparity um, that they have to come back from. Whereas like I would normally do um, like a, a same person, 365, they tweak it. Uh, maybe we can pull off the floor, but now it's at 225 for like two by five or even a three by five. So now we have a little bit of a, a bigger gap to kind of work back out of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point. Kind of thinking about like where you want to, because the back week, it's not just the day and then you're done. You're going to be dealing mm-hmm. with maybe like three to six workouts. And mm-hmm. kind of in a in the tiny one, and then how exactly are you planning on kind of navigating from there? Because um, if you're if you're, it's it's weird to call it my it's it's not micro loading, but like if someone's pulling three hundred pounds, five pounds is micro loading. Um, like if you are just kind of going, all right, we're doing doubles at you know three ten, then three fifteen, then twenty, and so on and so forth. It's almost the same exact stimulus every single time. Mm-hmm. You know the, the weights the weights so the so samey. Um, you kind of need to give yourself that longer ramp so that you can kind of play around with the range of intensity. You know. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Pete, Chase and I seem to be same page about that. Consider trying higher reps. See how you like it. Um, and then well, and also kinda... this, it kind of just depends too a lot. Like um, that's, that's kind of like more for like my guys who are just like, they're more of like a mental, this is going to be like a, a real big mental process for them getting over this, this hurdle. But for the guys who are just, you know, the, the they're just wanting to tack on a lot of weight and they don't give a fuck about injuring themselves. I kind of mm-hmm. use Pete's example of like, yeah, we're going to diminish the range of motion, keep intensity high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Figure out what for the client they consider a win and what they consider a loss. Like if some guy who's like, oh, I'm fucking stoked about pulling 405 and he tweaked his yeah. back and he can only pull 225, he may be, you know, morally offended by that. But if you have him mm-hmm. rack pull 315, it feels a little bit better for him, you know? Um, yeah. That's an interesting balance to play. Um, I always err on the side of uh, like a lot of lighter work, a lot of higher mm-hmm. rep work, a lot of fives. And then at the end of the workout, when they're already sufficiently warm, then tapering the volume down into like a triple or a double just to say, hey, you know, you can probably still hit something heavy. You know, we just don't want yeah. you to now. Yeah. Um, and then almost all rest periods during a uh, back tweak, they're going to be spent, you know, assault bike, prowler, walking around. Um well, it's kind of just use like a no sitting down policy, you know, mm. um, like I just kind of need you to keep moving, you know, um, that seems to work well. Uh, so this guy, his name is MS 18 a, his name is MS 18 K A F C. Isn't that like a gang? I MS? think, yeah. MS 18, isn't it MS 18? That's sort of, is that a cartel? I feel like that's yeah, a cartel. So. <laughs> we may be talking to like the president of this cartel here. Oh man. He's a shitty gym. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we I gotta know. get your gym together, dude. Um, okay, yeah, MS18. I was like, why does that sound familiar? Thanks for bringing that up. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought this camera angle was gonna be shit, but we can see kind of, you know, most of what we're most of what mm-hmm. we're going for here. Just kind of needs to clip the video. Oh, it's MS13. 13. 13. Gotcha. Thank you, cool dude. Okay, this guy is five iterations past those. He's Mexican. way, yeah. He's a harder he's hitter, man. He's maybe even Colombian at this point. <laughs> um, He's getting down to a comfortable point, I would say. I think his stance is certainly too narrow. I would I would bet the house on that. Yeah. 
Yeah. How are you feeling about this, Chase? Depth is fine. I don't like his back angle. Um, yep. But like you, you probably hit the nail on the head with if his stance is too narrow, he has all this thigh jamming up against his gut. Now he's going to have to widen out his stance, and then he'll be totally fine and be able to lean over more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think this is the just clear the belly out of the way or clear the thighs out of mm -hmm. the way for the belly, you know. Yeah, I think they're the rest of it, like what he's attempting to do with bracing, you know, knees are really over the toes where we want him to be. Is he driving his hips out of the bottom? Hips are coming out of the bottom. His eyes are shooting up slightly. I don't know if you guys can see that, um, but I can see that and we want to we want to pull that out. Yeah, that's a good question, Chase. Are you going to eventually migrate to like a sandals guy, like a leather sandals straps guy? No, dude, I will never. Are you sure? I have like this weird, I guess it's a phobia or fear. I don't know what you would say. But like, I don't want to be in like a, a stressful situation in life where it's like I have to change a tire or I have to like run from something. And my mm -hmm. goddamn flip flops are now nowhere to be seen or they fall off. And I'm running through stickers. I have to jump over a bar bar. Who knows? Like, yeah. fuck that. I want to have these goddamn laces tied up tight. That is an incredibly reasonable take. It's like I ne next to my bed, I have a gun. I have a fire yeah. extinguisher. I have a phone charger. I have a phone. Yeah. I have all the things that I need. Um, perfect. I, I mention this all the time. Anastasia's like, can you get a pair of sandals? You're always wearing shoes and pants all the no. time. And it's like, what? It's crazy. Fuck Think them. about it. There have been a non-negligible, probably at this point, hundreds of thousands of people who have died trying to run away from things and just didn't have appropriate shoes oh, on yeah. and just died. Yep. You know what I mean? That's true. Just, ima just imagine that. You know, you see some kid getting kidnapped across the street and you need to sprint after him, but then like your Birkenstock slips off and can't. Yeah. Or you didn't have your croc little uh, four wheel mode activated. Or yeah. You didn't have, you just... if you have sport mode activated on your Crocs, it's slightly <laughs> yeah. more redeemable. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's a very reasonable position. Frankly. Yeah. When I see adult men wearing sandals, I'm like, that's, you can't do that, man. Yeah. That's, exactly. You can't, you can't do that. Um, all right. Do you remember this guy, Chase? Is that the French dude? This is Millen Chicks. This is not the French guy. Um, they kind of look alike. He may be ethnically French. I don't know. Um, but this is um, this is Millen Chicks. We've seen him squat a bunch. He sent in a lot of squats before. I thought he was um, French. Why, why am I thinking that he's French? There's just another French guy who looks very similar to Millen Chicks. I guess so. Yeah. Um, but interestingly, it seems as if Millen Chicks has uh, shimmed one of his feet. So yeah, I'm curious about that too. Like, how did you figure out that you have a leg length discrepancy and if it feels femoral or tibial? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the case of a of a shim, it's more often than not like there's something wrong with the foot, something wrong with the ankle, or the or the shin. So it's like you are physically adding length to that segment. It's generally not um, fem femoral length, at least in the case of like the squat or the deadlift. Um, yeah, curious as to how you came to this conclusion, Millen Chicks. Mm -hmm. Let us know. Um, you may have sent that information into Mick. Mick tends to put all the videos in here, so I'm not entirely sure if he ended up seeing that or not. Um, but what do you think about the deadlift outside of the shimming? It actually looks pretty good. Um, yeah. I think he needs to take a little bit more time, like on that second rep, just kind of squeezing. I see this a lot with people is that they do the first rep really nicely and then they just kind of get into that groove of like, all right, I'm just going to pull and get this thing over with. Um, just take your time a little bit. Uh, make sure that you were just completely uncomfortable before pushing and this will be fine. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm looking for something that's very important here. Someone said they're from Brazil. That's uh, John Carr. Yeah, John Carr, he said, I'm Brazilian, wearing sandals is cultural, and I'm looking up the homicide rate in Brazil. <laughs> and I was like, it has to be, he's at number one. A correlation? Yeah, I was like, it's easy, <laughs> easy murder. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. What's your bet for number one, Chase, before I put this on the screen? Of people dying in Brazil? No, just for homicide rates country. Incident of oh, homicide. Gotcha. Um, you will be surprised. Somewhere, somewhere in the sixties or seventies. No, but like I'm saying, what physical place? Like what country? Oh, oh, gotcha. Um, yeah. I was very surprised by this. 
I'm gonna say somewhere in like Southeast Asia. Okay. All right. Cool. That was okay. So Chase's pull with Southeast Kinda Asia. Close. Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in here. Yeah. So by the way, Joker, very clearly, just look at this big splotch of red right there. <laughs> Brazil is not doing so hot. It is the U.S. Virgin Islands. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. They had fifty-two totally comments. Off. Okay. So I. This is crazy. Yeah. So this is according to 2012. I'm U.S. number one, by the way, again, baby. Here we go. Hell yeah. Represent, boys. But then we have, yeah, a lot of uh, Caribbean, South uh, Africa, Central America. Yeah. So it seems like just in general, once you get below Rio Grande, murder rates exponentially higher. If I had to bet, according to Chase's doctoral thesis, sandal rate also exponentially higher as well. I would agree. Because, look, let's look at Jamaica. <laughs> fucking sandals. sandals. Soto. Sandals. Yeah, sandals. El Salvador, fuck yeah. Sandals. All of these. I, there's none of these places are cold and non sandal Here we go. Oh, this is interesting. If this one's Northern America. St. Pierre and Miquelon is a small island off of the coast of Newfoundland. Hmm. That's pretty sick. So that's the only one that you would say is not in the sandal category. It so is not just... a sandal category, <laughs> but they had one murder. In 2009, but they just have an incredibly small amount of people. <laughs> so take that for what it's worth. Um, okay, all right, all right. Back to back to non sandal related murder. Do you think John Carr means that it's more murder or less murder? I'm gonna say it's less murder, but I don't know. Like, okay, where does he live at? John, it, was it like in? He said Brazil. He's a Brazilian. I know, but is in like Rio de Janeiro? Is it San Pablo? I'm not sure. Yeah, dox yourself for all of our Brazilian listeners. Mm -hmm. um, so we got MJDC here, um, and I'm going to guess with this weight on the bar, he's going to be pressing. We'll see. Yes. Yeah, he's Hold doing that. the elbow thing. He's pressing. Okay. I think this is what? 155, 65? Yeah, 165. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's in Sao Paulo. Our boy from Sao Paulo. Chase, do you have a lot of Brazilians in Oklahoma? Uh, there was a bunch in Houston. But not That's that a surprise. Any. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to this chick before Phoebe um, on Tinder. I met her. <laughs> and uh, she... <laughs> It's it's weird. Like she was over here, um, and she was basically living with um, this family that it's not adoption, but it's like a work program. And she was like a nanny and stuff like that for like these very rich people. And she was like, "Yeah, this is kind of like the best job ever." Like, like they imported cool. a nanny from Brazil. Not like they specifically, but like this organization <laughs> kind of did. It's weird. Okay, yeah. it's kind of like, like a work, work placement. Too. Yeah. That so Chase and I were also talking about sex trafficking at Disney. How the the elaborate conspiracy that sounds like one of those things, Chase. Yeah, you they can just probably have a Brazilian order, Disney down. You can mail order a, a nanny yeah. from Brazil. Yeah. Um. Okay. Did you watch MJ's one sixty five press? Yes. How are you feeling about this pretty strict press? Um. Yeah, I would like less head movement and actually some more hip movement. Um. You may have to think of this as the bin happening lower, MJ, and that's like the thighs going forward, even like the the knees going forward without bending them, uh, or getting forward past your toes with like your hips, in order to create a bounce. Because what you're doing is just mm -hmm. throwing your shoulders back, your head back, and that's sufficient for the bar path. But there's really no extra oomph out of the bottom that we're getting with the the bounce. Yes. Um. So you know how people say the starting strength squat, the low bar, properly performed low bar squat, they're like, oh, that's like the good morning squat. And it's just like a, a bastardization of what we what we teach. Mm -hmm. This is that for the press, where people don't move their hips, and then they just throw their shoulders back rapidly and press. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll oftentimes use the cues of just throwing your, uh, your knees forward. Because um, people like this are so concerned about keeping their knees straight. Once you kind of let them be like, loosen your knees up a little bit, get your knees forward. They'll end up kind of balancing out and doing it pretty correctly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, hips out over the toes. 
don't press until your hips are forward, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, this, by the way, I don't know if you noticed this, Chase. This is the first time we've seen MJ without a mask on in like a long ass time. Really? Yeah. MJ always wears, unless I'm completely tricking myself. I feel like MJ is. So. We, we saw him like on a bench in like a squat without a mask, I thought. No way. No, he's been, I think he's sure? been asked prom. Okay. I, I'm just going crazy then. Maybe he shaved or got a haircut or something. Yeah, he looks more clean cut and stuff, but. Okay. All right. He's he's going straight. He's sober for 10 days. Um, <laughs> did you know what an au pair is or an au pair? Now I do. I, I think that's, I thought she was maybe like speaking Brazilian whenever she said that. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Or Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably like through, went right over my head, but um, no, I mean, uh, cool dude's in the chat and he's saving us with all this useful information. He's like, yeah, uh, Wikipedia, Google, just he's the fact checker. Fact -checking. He's, yeah, he's, he's fact -checking debunking us. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. yes. Oh, by the way, speaking of things that need to be debunked, this guy we went totally opposite ends of the mass spectrum. MJ was going, he was raw dogging public space air, and then now this gentleman whose name seems to be Dan. Um, uh, Bane mask in this he shit. has the full Bane mask on, which is yeah. pretty sick. Cool dude, if you could fact check Bane masks being safe for us, <laughs> please let us know. <laughs> oh man, this guy's name are is these... Dan. Is that what you said? Yeah, Dan. I'm trying to figure out if these are are these just like the weirdly colored pound plates, or are these actual? Yeah, plates? they're they're probably. I mean, because if that was, would it be a hundred? and 30 so about i don't know oh sick dan's here oh dude i love it when that happens have you tried doing cardio in that before or is it lifting only for this guy what's the 3m okay it's the right he's saying the mask yeah so is that the um That's is that next one like, uh, oh okay mm -hmm. all right so dan said either it is the wrong color plates it's 235 on the bar um, how long have you been doing this for, Dan? Is this LP or you in intermediate programming? How long has this been going on for? Um, first thing I would say is, is go wider. Go wider mm -hmm. in the stance. Um, aim the face down a little bit more. You're picking your head up on the way up, and it's causing you to kind of rise with your chest, um, whereas we want you to pull up with the hips. Yeah, so, like yeah a, we're even seeing some heel lift on the uh, on the. Uh, yeah, uh, I would like to see a little bit more uh, knees going forward, too. I think... Um, if you widen out your stance, you're going to be able to kind of fill the knees a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, how wide, how much that. wider would you go? I, I would say at least two inches three on each inches. side. Yeah, that's three? Like three. Okay. Three on each side or three total? Three total. Three total. Okay. You know, I, I we have another thing, question to ask you about that. Um, it's either a difference in interpretation of the model or mm -hmm. you and Trupos have similar thoughts on squat stance width. Um, okay, so Dan said he's going through his LP for the third time. Man, do you think this one is going to work? I hope so. Yeah, sincerely hope so. Bust your way out of the LP, dude. Um, yeah. I think these still things look really light. I mean, the stance with adjustment, you don't need to take weight off the bar for that. Don't change no. your rate of acceleration. Just literally keep going. Just move your stance out. You'll be totally fine. Um, interesting question from Phil Bourdon. Is there a sweet spot for body weight or should you always be trying to gain weight when powerlifting? What do you think, Chase? If you're very new to this, then yes. And by gaining weight, what you mean is gaining more muscle mass. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're very competitive and you've been doing this a while and you know like you're not going to exit out of the 105 class, maybe swing from like um, – you know, time of competition being at 105 to then maybe skewing up to 110, maybe 112. That's probably the threshold that I would like to see with people. Yeah, you got to figure out, you know, like, am I say like, are you saying you're doing powerlifting, but really you're just training the squat bench and the deadlift? Or yeah. are you actually doing powerlifting? Tease that out first. Sign up for a competition. They're almost always good for you. Um, very rarely bad for you. Uh and then kind of contextualize around your weight class, you know, and that could be, I'm going to sit three kilos over, I'm going to sit four kilos over. And frankly, if you're pretty new to powerlifting, it's totally okay just to go in a weight class up. You're not going to win anything anyways. It is for you individually. Um, so like, you know, if you if were like, okay, my weight class is, you know, like a hundred kilos or whatever, and you come in at 95, who cares? You mm -hmm. know, um, 
cutting weight whenever it's not really worth it. You know, it's 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 just kind of an activity that you're kind of choosing to do. Um, oh, John Carr, excellent question from John Carr. He said, "I'm 30 percent body fat. Should I gain 40 pounds?" Look, man, you need to lose some body fat, but then gain like 40 pounds of muscle. Oh man, yeah. I mean, you could. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's excellent. Okay, Phil. Um, so he's competing for the first time in a couple of months and was wondering. Um, yes. So you're going to have a lot of anxiety going on around your competition, regardless of whether or not you're an anxious person or not. It's just going to be high for you. Um, and I would recommend not giving yourself extra things to care about. You know, yeah. so if an extra thing to care about is I'm a month out, you know, I caught a random flu, feeling really fatigued, whatever, and I have to lose three kilos that's not going to be the most pleasant thing for you for your first experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say like, feel, I'm just going to go and compete at 275 when you weigh 215. Be reasonable about <laughs> it. Um, you, you're not going to randomly gain 50 pounds. Um, just try to kind of ballpark where your rate of gain has been. So if you've been gaining half a pound a week for the past, you know, let's say year, like just kind of project that that's going to keep happening. Um, mm -hmm. Any other advice for P or for Phil in his first meet? No, yeah, man, just don't worry about the stuff that's really inconsequential, especially at your at your time um, just starting out. So, like, your Wilkes and stuff like that, just focus on not the body weight, but just actual weight on the bar and just getting strong as fuck, and mm -hmm. it'll take care of the rest. Yeah, have fun. It'll take care of the rest. Um, have someone come with you, even if they know mm -hmm. nothing about powerlifting. Just to, like hold your shit, and if you have to go to the bathroom, and like okay, hold my belt, whatever. It's just all of that stuff, you know. Um, bring like a wrangler with you if it could be one of your buddies who's also competing, you know, even better. Um, how do you think about kind of proximities with warm ups, Chase? Do you think anything anything specific for a first timer during the warm up room? Um, just kind of stake your claim, man. Don't really get bossed around. Um, mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is if the, the the warm up area is really crowded. I mean, you know, make friends with people and stuff like that. Don't be a dickhead, but at the same time, don't let people warm up way past you and then you're struggling to hurry up and you're taking an attempt with like and you're warming up with like your second warm up. Um, mm -hmm. that shit's just gonna bite you in the ass. So make sure you're not warming up too quickly, but you're you're pacing, you have a nice little stain clicked in the area, and you're just doing a normal warm up routine that you've been practicing for months now. Um, as you're kind of getting along into this prep. Yeah. Um, one other thing I would say thoroughly, um, go and wash your hands in between deadlifts if you can. Um, you're going to be, you're going to have chalk on your hands from everything you've been doing. It can get really oily and a little bit sticky, kind of depending on the quality. You're going to be touching shit. You're going to be drinking shit, Sour Patch Kids, whatever, shaking people's hands. Um, you'll be like, oh, okay, my hands are chalked. I'm good to go. But it can actually kind of just create this little, little bit of an oily film. Um, really just go and like thoroughly clean that shit off then fresh chalk and it'll be like glue um john carr he said will there be reddit reviews maybe dude if we if we get there in time um do you want to talk about back tweaks or do you want to talk about uh do you want to go through the ss reddit chase okay i mean we can talk about it real quick um okay uh, back tweaks. These are kind of the operational principles. I've, I've written these down to send them to other people, uh, uh, before. So some of my clients, um, so I'll just run through these chase. If you see anything that sounds retarded or you especially agree with, let me know. Okay. Um, so first thing to do, if there's ever any sort of tweak, this applies most to lower back tweaks, just cause they're the most common for most athletes. Um, the first thing is just kind of to contextualize and assess what is going on, figuring out if you actually should be worrying. Um, like if you're doing some sort of strongman thing, or if you're doing some conditioning work and you slipped and fell, you may have to worry a little bit more, you know, like if you were just warming up for RDLs and your back feels tight, you probably don't have to worry at all. Um, really take a step back to give yourself a second and say, all right, there's really no reason to worry. If there was a catastrophic injury, you would know about it. Yeah. Um, and then that kind of goes into number two, where it's like, you're going to take a breather. You don't have to follow the same four minute set timer for your next set. Um, and we kind of want you to think, walk it off a little bit. Um, what you want to avoid doing, let's say if you do have like a spasm in your back or your neck or your shoulder is just lay down on the ground, stare at the ceiling and completely, you know, seize up. Um, we want your head to kind of be out of it. Um, so like if you hurt your back and then the first thing that you do is just immediately collapse to the floor while holding it and then sit there motionless for five minutes, 
it's not going to do any favors. Um, yeah. Try. I'm, I'm not saying go and start doing push-ups and cartwheels, but try to avoid a complete lack of motion. Um, the third thing I always say is start doing something, anything. Um, if it's just lower body on that day, if it's just squatting or deadlifting, try to go back to maybe some air squats or some air deadlifts or even just cleaning up the plates that you have. So if you have four or five on the bar, that's eight plates that you can kind of take off, do a little farmer's carries, you know, help your back feel something. Um, if you have upper body work to do, just go and start doing your upper body work. You mm -hmm. know, um, all of that stuff, you know, getting your bench, setting your hooks up, getting your bar, getting your plates, all of that. It's just kind of loading its movement. It'll calm you down a little bit. Um, start working. Uh, and then I always tell people, you know, really try to quit while you're ahead. So if you, let's say if you're supposed to work up to four or five and deadlift and you get to 315 and your back just feels like shit, maybe it's not a tweak, but it feels really bad. Um, it may not be worth it to dig, to try to hit something, you know, as hard as you can. Um, try to think about quitting while you're ahead. You know, the goal is kind of frequency of training, um, especially if it's after a back tweak. So let's say if you tweaked your back on Monday, we want you to get all of your training sessions in like Pete was saying before. Um, so it's not like that first session back has to be the most important thing in the world and you have to get 10 sets in or 12 sets in or whatever. Um, the goal is, you know, frequency um, rather than magnitude of the individual sessions. Um, and then expect ups and downs, but it should be going mostly positive. I think one thing that people assume is that there's going to be like a darkest before the dawn situation and it's going to like feel like shit for a week and it's going to magically get better. Um, I've never seen that happen. I've never seen yeah. one of those situations. It should be kind of gradual resolution over whatever your time frame is. Um, I don't think really kind of with any sort of history or injury process, it has been darkest before the dawn. I'm going to dig a big hole and I'm just going to randomly get out of it. Um, anything to add here this, on this one, Chase? No, I think you, you basically cover it. Um, just let pain be um, your guide here. And if things really hurt, um, what you're kind of doing with like, let's say an air squat, don't worry about an air squat. Don't even think about squatting. Let's move on to something else. That's mm -hmm. a different range of motion. That's using kind of the same muscle mass, all that stuff. And just, again, don't stop moving. Uh, just keep keep at it. Yeah. Do the just keep swimming thing. Was that Dory who said that? Yeah. Yeah, that was Dory. Can you do the just keep swimming thing? Um, to, to round this off, there were a few other things that I always like to ask people um, after they have a back tweak. And sometimes they're freaking out about it, sometimes they're not. Um, if someone is freaking out about it in the moment, I like to say, are you hurt or is your back hurt? Like you, like if Chase hurt his back, would it be like, are you Chase mentally in a state of despair because your back was hurt or is just mm -hmm. that tissue down there hurting? You know, um, like it's like if you stub your toe, you don't have an existential crisis about your identity and your life in the next three weeks. Your toe is hurt, not you. You know, you didn't get your yeah. legs blown off in Iraq. It's, you know, your, your back's tweaked. You're going to be fine. Um, the next thing is, you know, how can you be productive? It doesn't matter if the, how accurate that list is or how good at it you are, just start going and being productive. You know, um, uh, I just had, just had one of my athletes who dislocated his shoulder, um, and he's kind of doing the exact opposite of this and it's driving me insane. He's doing absolutely nothing productive. He's just sitting on his ass. Jesus, dude, It's killing me. Um, and the next thing is going to be, is it actually a setback, you know? Um, like for Phil here. So Phil is competing for the first time in a couple months. If Phil has a bad back tweak, that is a setback, right? Let's say John Carr, he is not competing anything. He's just going to do a cycle of training and have fun. He's not competing anything <laughs> for the next two years. Is it a setback if he can't do deadlifts for a week? You know, no. um, it's not, not at all, man. Exactly. Um, and that kind of goes into the, are you thinking straight? Like, are you being really emotional about it? Are you being very worried? Um, and then this last one, this, this one kind of has to be a multi-day process. Like where are you doing your homework? That's sleep, food, recovery, programming, you know, um, is your programming fucking stupid? Did you pick a coach who's a bad coach? Um, are you eating appropriately? Are you sleeping appropriately? Were your rest times appropriate? All that stuff. Um, yeah. any other questions that you like to ask people or try to get people to think about after these things happen? Uh, just kind of be like a Sherlock Holmes here and just kind of think back to like, if this is a reoccurring thing, like, what are you doing? Um, mm -hmm. Oh, so you're doing, like, some flies, and you always mm -hmm. tweak some shit on the bench? Maybe yeah. let's quit doing flies, and then let's let's see it. And then you kind of awaken people's eye, and you see, and, and they see clearly that, yeah, I'm doing something that's not conducive to the program. Um, it's not conducive to really anything. I just want to do it. 
It's like, look, mm-hmm. well, you hired me. I can help program something that's going to be beneficial and help you satisfy whatever weird craving that you have. And we can get on with this. How often do you have to say that? Like, you hired me. <laughs> Very often. Because, I mean, I, okay. I do have a lot of level-headed people. But there has been a few times where it's like, I mean, why the fuck did you even sign up? I mean, you literally have you have this availability at you know at Planet Fatness. And you can just go there and fuck around, or you can come in yeah. here and actually get strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that's. I have to say, I have a few people who I have to kind of routinely say that to. It's like I don't know why you hired me at all. Yeah, I really, I really don't understand. It's it's an unfortunate thing to say because it's kind of like generally people, you know, it's not really that they're not listening to you. It's that they are kind of like they're, they don't listen to anybody. Stubborn. Yeah, they're just fucking stubborn. Yeah. Um, yeah. Man, uh, but yeah. So th- those are all things I'd like to ask. We'll pull up the SS Reddit. Um, so what were you? Um, how was your experience at Pete's? You forgot to kind of fill us in on that. Oh, um, Pete's place was good. Um, so I think I coach the squat wider in terms of stance than Pete does, and I mm-hmm. think you as well. Um, yeah. And then he also really likes the elbows being tucked to shit and back on the bench. I tend to have the elbows of more flared out, especially on the ascent. So it was interesting watching him um, yeah. on the for the flare or the tuck for you. No, the flare out on the way down. Okay, interesting. Okay. Um so you guys may just be samey on the on the squat. By the way, this is a this is from Jacob. This gentleman has actually sent in some priority form checks along the way. So I've seen this guy squat a lot. Um, one by five at 340. Chase, you'll get a kick out of this. This guy has been floating in like the same 20 to 40 pound range on all of his lifts for over a year now and just refuses Why? to get a coach to do his programming. Jesus Christ. And I'll see these things still sending a form check every, you know, few months and being like, really trying to do this right. And it's the same all the time. Yeah. It breaks my little heart. What do you think about these? Some beautiful knee slide. (laughs) A little slip and slide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So how would you fix this guy's knee slide? You have to bend his knees first and then freeze them. Um, so, like, as he's going down, he's kind of initiating it with just leaning at the hips and then the knees. So it's going to be the reverse in his mind where it says, look, don't worry about the leaning over part, but get knees over the toes as fast as possible. And then hold them there at the bottom and on the way back up. And then gradually, it's going to look like he's bending his hips and knees at the same time, just like how the model calls for. Mm-hmm. That damn model it ends up being right all the time. Mm-hmm. It does. It's fucking shame. Um, okay. Do you want to do a technical question about a phase one to phase two or more videos? What do you think? Okay. No, no, no. All right. This gentleman's named Jupiter tank 57. He says his right foot does this weird thing. Every time he pulls over 500 pounds. Um, I think my pronated hand is allowing the bar to drift forward slightly, but I don't know. Oh, nice. Dude, that's awesome. I was hoping for some fucked up shit like this too. Yeah, this is the perfect fucked up shit. All right. How would how would you help Jupiter Tank here in his stanky leg? Man, uh, it, it just seems like you just need to widen it. Like you start started out a little bit too narrow. And and then after like you scooted around dude, like the boot scoot boogie here, you went back mm-hmm. to a nice place where your feet can actually push from. Um I would like to actually see your grip out a little bit wider too. I think you would probably just Okay, so I'm gonna try to pause this before he starts pulling. Can you see where his feet are? Yeah. Okay, so keep that in your brain and then we'll see where they go after he moves them. Okay. All right. That's where they move to. So um Chase, what do we oftentimes recommend about the toe angle and the deadlift? It's going to be pretty similar to the squat, about 30 degrees, maybe a little less, a little okay. more, depending on the individual. And then did you, did anyone notice, anybody in the audience here, if it's Phil or John Carr or Cool Dude, how his <laughs> toe angle ended up getting where it wanted to be? Um, 
Now the knee kick that he's doing, kind of like the, the calf raise knee kick, that's a separate issue. Um, but generally what happens is that if a foot wants to be somewhere, it's going to get there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, in this case, he started with his toes, his feet pretty straight, heels pretty far out, heel drifted in, you know, just start with him there in the first place. Um, how would you address this, the stanky leg portion though? Not the stance, Chase. And you have to cue just to think about push through the floor harder. Um, if we fix his stance, um, I think, again, just to go a little bit wider, this will help. But um, the cue to think about is like pushing your quad to the floor, um, thinking about getting as straight as vertical as possible along those lines. And because I think what he's doing is just kind of yanking it up with his back more so like at that position mm -hmm. than actually finishing the push. Yeah. So he's trying to get his knees and quads back into it so he can get into his hips and finish the lockout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole thing is a little tilted. I would, I would certainly the one of the early things you said that was that was solid was um, uh, widening the stand, widening the grip out as well. The grip definitely needs to be wider, mm -hmm. um, wider for sure. Uh, so this is kind of a, it's similar to hitching. I don't have a like a one word term for this. Do you know a one word term for this? Because I've seen this a bunch. I don't, I don't know a specific. Like what term. his legs are doing. Yeah, so like we call hitching when you know we get the knees under the bar and ramp it up. Is there yeah. a one word term for this? I don't know, man. I, I would probably lump it into hitching as well. Yeah, I don't think, a, yeah, I, it's basically a form of hitching, but he's doing it with one leg as opposed to two. You'll see some people al yeah. almost do this with two legs as well. Um, they kind of kind of alternate. Um, but more or less, you're trying to get that bar up. The knees are already relatively locked out. So your ankles are starting to do some work as the back is extended. Um, I would really just just hammer this with a bunch of tempo work. You know, um, yeah. if you can pull 500 pounds for, I think, three or four reps, whatever this set was, um, go back down to 365, you know, do some tempo work, make the rep take four seconds on the way up. You know, don't do touch and go. Um, why do you guys teach angled toes? Oh, that's a good question. What do you think, Chase, about this one? Well, Phil, this guy probably heard the same thing, right? And he's having this problem. But what we want is that his toes are out about 30 degrees, right? So this is going to do a few things. One, it's going to artificially shorten the femurs, so that way our range of motion is nice and efficient. And then two, it incorporates more muscle mass to the lift. So on the inside of your thigh here, you, you have what's called adductors. Um, they help it with the hip extension, so the standing up portion at the top of the deadlift. We get those stronger by kind of rotating the toe out, and it's going to help us again with the, the finishing part of the range of motion. Um, I don't see why you would want like a more vertical or I'm sorry, more narrow and more like toes forward angle, unless like you you've tweaked something in your legs, like your, um, your hips or something like that. But it's been very popular by like Pete rubbish and a bunch of other big time deadlifters. And look, if you're pulling 800 pounds or 900 pounds with your toes forward, go ahead. I don't care. But if you're trying to get stronger with 225, you're going to use more muscle mass. Mm hmm. Is that your dog? Yeah, yeah, she's sleeping right now and barking a little bit. Aw, that's so cute. Um, off topic question: Did would she have like a higher dream frequency? What's oh, up? she's dreaming more. And you're cutting out a little bit. Oh no! Repeat Chase, it. you there? Yeah. Oh man, sorry. I think we disconnected a little bit. Um. I was saying, is the is she dreaming more? She's getting older now. Can you tell, or is it was it more when she was a puppy puppy? I say it's about even. I think she makes okay. more noise though, right? As, as she's getting older, but um, frequency and stuff, yeah, I think it's about the same. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, okay, that's that's a very unrelated question, um, Phil. Uh, so one of the things that the toe angle does is it influences the angle of the knee. And then the knee influences the angle of the femur. Um, everybody has different angles to these things, kind of depending on the way their head of the femur is built and then the way that their hip sockets are built. People who are incredibly strong will likely tend to have anthropometric or features in their body that are similar to each other. Um, so in the situation for most people, we want the knees angled out slightly so they're not collapsed in. This kind of gives, you know, the things on the outside of the thigh, so like the glutes and the things on the inside of the thigh, a good balance so that they can fight against each other. 
for other people who don't really have this problem, their legs are already angled out a good bit already, they can have their toes straight ahead. It doesn't really matter. Um, what we're worried about really is shortening the length of the femurs, I would say. Um, I would say that's almost, I don't, do you think that's priority number one with the toe angle chase? So I would really say so because then that affects the hip position and then they're pulling mechanics yeah. more so than the muscle mass. Yeah, I would say I'm, I'm kind of up in the air about it between tying the um, kind of like the hip bite and things like that and the ability to extend your back. Um, when your toes are straight ahead, oftentimes what happens is that your belly runs into your thighs. And when that happens, you have a really hard time extending your back. Um, for someone who already knows how to extend their back, they may be able to have that thigh, you know, belly contact and have it not be an issue. Um, but for most people, we want those things out of the way. That way you can get a nice big back extension. You can train all the musculature that you want. Um, the toes straight ahead doesn't, I, I don't even see an argument for how that could be beneficial. I think we have positive arguments as to why we do what we do. I, mm -hmm. I haven't heard any sort of convincing argument as to why toes straight ahead is, um, oh man. Oh man, dude. You feel it. Was Dude. in on it oh, phil what do you guys why do you guys don't like sumo um so we have a series of criteria that we use to determine the model for the lifts and then those that model is what creates our preferences um there's a lot of articles about this there's a lot of books about it um if i'm not sure if you're familiar with starting strength or if you just don't i'm not sure how you stumbled across this just in general um but the book starting strength third edition excellent place to start it has kind of the elaborated version of all of the arguments. We are just kind of walking texts and then, of course, experience past that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, so we would say that the, the, the shortest explanation would be it doesn't train the back musculature as much. And it's too close to the squat in terms of joint angles. And we're already squatting. Powerlifting has different goals, which is why powerlifting likes the sumo squat or the mm -hmm. sumo deadlift. Excuse me. Um, all right. We got to watch Caven's. This will be the last video here. And we'll watch Caven's uh, five uh, reps at 225. Trying low bar, doing it too much like high bar? Question mark. I don't really mm. see the low bar coming into this. Yeah, I think this is still literally in the high bar position. Yeah. Unless he has a weird band. Um, you would move the bar down, Chase? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, other than move that, the like bar down still, for sure. His back angle looks relatively fine. Like it just, he probably has that weird anthropometry to where he has very similar um, cadences of like a low bar and a, a high bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the high bar, low bar. Um, Low bar, high bar. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about this too much. Move. Get some squat shoes. Number one priority. Um, get the bar in the correct low bar position, and then you can kind of give it an honest college try. Um, mm -hmm. And then work work on hip drive because these are all kind of you. You've been driving your chest out of the hole, Kevin. Um, so figure out that hip drive concept that we're talking about, and then that will probably make it feel more like a low bar squat, other than just kind of a high bar squat with the bar in a slightly different position. So, um, any parting shots for the people, Chase? No. No. Just go out there, keep training, and uh, try your best. Keep training, try your best. I want to see if I can just see something god fucking awful. What's stopping me from getting to the bottom of the squat? Oh man, he took a screenshot. All right. <laughs> I'm trying desperately to squat and posted a video a few days ago that received a ton of helpful feedback. Now I'm trying to break it way down and start with trying to replicate this unloaded position shown in the squat tutorial video. That looks right. Perfect. Okay. His ass is on a wall. Perfect. That's the model. <laughs> uh, without the wall, it looks like this. Oh, oh man. man dude. Oh, okay. What do you think, Chase? He's clearly not strong enough to hold himself in that position. That is mm -hmm. the telltale sign that Whenever you have someone deconditioned or just not strong enough and you put them in that bottom position, they instantly go to their toes. They get more anterior because we are wanting to get back into the posterior chain. Mm -hmm. The posterior chain is not developed and they can't hold that position. And there you go. Who is he praying to right now? Um, I don't know. Man. Yeah. So I would widen the stance up a little bit and then get some squat shoes. Um, there's no virtue in doing this with bare feet. 
There's no bonus points. There's no lifting police who's going to come and salute you and give you a coupon to McDonald's. <laughs> they don't exist. Um, widen your stance out. Put on some squatting shoes. There are plenty of people who have what they consider to be reduced flexibility. They wear squatting shoes, and then they're like, wow, the squat feels so much better. Mm -hmm. And we don't do that with any other activity. It's not like I'm going rock climbing, and I'm like, man, rock climbing shoes are for idiots. Well, we're like, soccer cleats. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, I'm, uh, yeah, go, go play, go play soccer without cleats on and then enjoy your bloody stumps at the end of the game. Exactly. Um, get some squat shoes to start. Uh, and then the next thing is like, I'll, I'll tell people their knees need to close. So this right here, that is his knee. This is his knee angle. It's the angle between the shin and the femur that needs to close. So if I told him to do like a runner stretch where he's standing up and he grabs his shin and pulls it back, you know what I'm talking about, Chase? Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee you he could do that. Yep. Right. That is the most closed his knee is ever going to get. By definition, his knee is like this. It is as closed as possible. You just need to do that while you're squatting. Right. Mm -hmm. And then again, that is literally it's, it's a strength issue. You know, um, yeah. your quads need to be able to hold you up in that position. Um, hook me up, Alex. Should we hook up John Carr, Chase? Sure. I hope it's nice and spicy, though. OK. All right. How do we got to search. You do I have to type in the U? Joka Ing? All right. No. All right. Let's try not. Let's try. He's right there. Hold on. Go back to it. It was in your search. Was it? See that little thing that popped up? What are you talking about? Here, delete like the the backslash or the forward slash. Yeah, he's right there. Oh, there it is. Okay. I would have gone off website. All right. All right, I'm trying to click on your. Here we go. Posts, bam. Joker, you got to make a. You got to make an easier. All right, this was one month ago. Conditioning for intermediates. Here we go. Set of five failed. Right side went up, but left side failed. I think this is what's going on here. Oh, he's pressing again, Chase. Do you remember his press from last time? I think it was. He just had like no hit movement, right? Yeah, it was no hit movement. It was a strike press. Yeah. Here we go. Chase, you got to get one of these beards. I'm trying to grow something out. It just it's like a neared right now. It's just a I'm saying beard. they're just the ones that just kind of like the pharaoh style, just the chin sh shoots out. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to get one of those, dude. Ooh. Grind it, man. What a grind, dog. Woo. All right, he just lost it out in front. What do you think, Chase? Why did this? Uh, why did um, Joka fail? He's just throwing the bar way out in front. Um, so like right there, he's able to throw his hips. His hip movement looks nice, but the timing now of him pressing and finishing with the bar closer to his face, non-existent. So that's why he's kind of just <laughs> wishing the bar would go up in this configuration here. But um, if he, you know, grazes the beard shaves the chin, touches the nose, all that stuff kind of emphasizing getting the bar back over the shoulders after mm -hmm. the hip movement, um, this thing will go. Yeah. And then if you remember last time, we said the grip was too wide, and then I believe the grip is too wide here as well. I the arms agree. end up getting like this. Yep. When I think the arms are, let's try to line this up, when they are getting in this configuration, it's too wide. We want them We want them pretty close, pretty tucked together. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Pinecone King. PCK, are you guys getting to the SS app submissions today or Reddit only? Um, we got through, it was, it was the beginning of the show. I'll read off who we got through, Pinecone. We got through Gogo Conrad, Denny Vathar, or Denny Vathar. We got through Austin95, MS18, Midland Chicks, MJDC, and Dan Lee. So if that was you, that's who we got through today from the SS app. Um, do you think you should narrow it some more, Chase? Yes. How much more? So I like to tell people like right where that knurling starts, you're going to put the web of your hand right there. And if that's a little bit too narrow, just bump it out a finger width and you'll be fine. And that, that works for like overwhelmingly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I w it would be very nice to be a, a guy whose shoulders are so wide that that grip width doesn't work. Just takes it like this. <laughs> 
you're just like actually i can just only get it to here i'm sorry <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm out at the bench grip yeah yeah that would be that would be nice i would i would really enjoy that um but does the grip do i move the do i move me grip even more like a pirate <laughs> <laughs> um yeah 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 john carr listen to um listen to chase move your grip in uh the mm -hmm. target that he said kind of where that knurling starts not the center knurling but the primary knurling on both both ends of the bar right on the web so right where that begins put your thumb right there mm -hmm. um that's a pretty good spot uh, any part of, so you're going to be doing your competition prep series right yeah like I, I have all the i have some videos that i've kind of kept uh, from this last week of training, I need to post something, but you do. I was going to get all pissed off about me not making shit. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to just put my nose down and grind through it. Man. Okay. Yeah. The last thing was, was chase five weeks ago was your last post. I know. Oh, I like to keep people on their toes, man. On their toes. As soon as I type the letter I into my internet browser, and to Vivaldi, by the way, highly recommend it's it's Chase's Instagram. I don't go to any other eye related. That's activity. awesome. That's it. As soon as I get one eye in, it's Chase. <laughs> um, but that's it for us. If you want videos on the show, um, there's a, a email down at the bottom. And then like uh, Pinecone um, said, we do them from the SS app as well. Um, but thank you all for watching. Check out links below. Stuff like that.